We are returning on our Monday to continue work on assignment five. So if I go to assignments, scroll down to spot illustration assignment five, you're going to see a lot of supplemental helpful things, including one slideshow that I'm going to be using today to show you different types of coloring that I've provided. It's called an exhaustive explanation of digital coloring. So I'll just right click on that and say open a new tab and then three different mentorship presentations, one about digital inking using Adobe Illustrator, one about uh, digital coloring, which we'll also be hearing from Hyde on today, and one about coloring basics from Sketch to Duotone. So these are all from different past digital honors students, different perspectives on the same basic digital art skill of digital inking and digital coloring, right? We heard from Fabian last class about digital inking. So now let's just do a really, really quick review. When you want to do an illustration, something that's made to be reproduced, you start by sketching and then you refine your sketch. And then to make it versatile, right, the most useful, to take advantage of what digital has to offer beyond traditional, you want that line art to be as clean as possible and to be able to be as scalable as possible. So the best way to do that is in, as a high-res raster file or as a vector file, right, for your line art. Then you're going to select your, your base colors, uh, what this student calls flat base colors. We call flat local color, you know, the color that the thing is without any lighting. And then you can add duotone color and other embellishments. And today I'm going to be showing you duotone color and other embellishments. So sketching, we use basic shapes. You try different things out and eventually you refine the pose, refine what you want for your illustration, whether it's character based, whether it's something else. And then you want to clean up your line art. I really recommend vectorizing it. We went over a few of those options in the last class periods. And then you add your base color, your local color, the color that the thing actually is. So the way it says here is you fill in your flat base color using the average color that the thing would be, local color. Use the magic wand tool to select areas inside the line art, then fill them with the bucket tool. That's just the typical way you do it. So the fox in any lighting condition is orange. The turtle in any lighting condition is green, the eagle in any lighting condition is brown, right, in gray. Those are the tools. Duotone, this will be the first thing I'm demoing today. Once you have your flat color, you can split that local flat color into highlights and shadows. So the fox is still orange, but now we have a highlight color for orange and a shadow color for orange. The turtle is still green, but we have a highlight color for green and a shadow, shadow color for green. The eagle is still brown, but we have a highlight color for the brown and a shadow color for the brown. And then when we want to get more advanced with the duotone, we can go beyond just splitting it into two, because duotone doesn't mean two tones. Duotone means that you're splitting the local color into lights and darks. But you can have an infinite amount of lights and darks, because this is soft edge duotone, which shows a full gradation from one gray that's lighter to a darker gray. But what it doesn't show is from one color to another color. That's something else. So here, this is a combination of what's called hard edge duotone, or in animation, what's called cell shading, and soft edge duotone. And I'll be demonstrating both to you. You do this by making a sandwich of your work, right? By putting a, a background on the bottom layer she uses gray, and then doing your line art on top of that. Now this shows the flat color. This is a, a demonstration that this student put together. And then they add what's called the duotone color. Let's see where there is the duotone. <laughs> so you can see all those shadow values added in. There you go. And then at the end here, they play with something called full spectrum. 
Full spectrum is when you mix other colors into your duotone color or your flat color. So that even though the cape is green, now it has this warm light, you know, added into it. So you have orange and red and yellow along with your green. So we'll be learning about that. This is how it, it can be done. You can use different blending modes to make duotone. You can do multiply, you can do darken, you can do overlay. They all work well. Or you can just keep it in normal mode and use direct adjustments, which is usually what I, what I teach. And then what is digital coloring versus digital painting? Digital painting is all about modeling with color. right? So this is all digital painting. Notice it's not behind any line art. Digital coloring always exists behind line art, even if the line art gets subtracted by the end. All right. Now, if we go to my exhaustive slides, <laughs> we've gotten to this step in the proje project so far, to filling in our line art with flat local color. So let's go to the assignment. Let me open mine up and open it up in Photopea, assignment five. Now, flat color, flat local color, like old Sunday comics, like Peanuts, was only ever colored with just flat local color. Charlie Brown shirt was always the same color every week. What's difficult about it is it's hard to find the right color. So, at the end of our demonstration last class, these were the flat colors I had chosen. This is with a white background. I have my black vectors on the top, so you always set it up like a sandwich. You have, pretend this isn't there, I'll teach you what this is later. <laughs> you have your, your black bread at the top, which is your line art. On the bottom, you have your blank white, which is your white bread. And then in between, you have your color. And the most basic color to start with is just flat color. So think of it as a grilled cheese sandwich, but these are all different types of cheese. Now sometimes it's nice not to have to make your own cheese, but to choose from a cheese plate, right? So I like to load in color references where I can just try on different colors in my flat color. But at the end of the day, those are your base colors. Now, those would work. They were fine. And I know that photo P leaves this little halo. Don't worry about it. That's more of a problem with photo P showing you what's there than what's actually there. But I'll show you how we can fix that too. But flat colors are largely subjective. And so over the weekend, I played with making new flat colors. What's so nice, I'll show you how this works. Once you have color samples, and once you've already done your flat color in one layer, this is why it's called flatting professionally, where an entry level coloring job is just to fill up the flats with any color available as long as they're different from each other. Another example of flatting is right here, right? Because as soon as you fill them in, then they can be replaced with any color you like very easily. So let me show you that. So this is the color I started with. I took the time to fill it in, but then I very simply just took those, took my paint bucket within Photo P and held down Option and I can just replace those colors straight away with new flat colors. That's because without the black line art, these are all self-contained. On and on and on. And it is subjective. So basically, I'll ask you guys, what flat colors do you like better? I'll give you two options. So this is option number one, and I like to see it sometimes on gray, it's a little bit easier. And then this is option number two. 
Yeah, I thought so too. Yep. And this just looked like like flannel pajamas, that red. So, anyway, yeah. Now I can always do a combination of the two. Like if I want to to change these again, it's really really easy. All I have to do is use my paint bucket. And I can hold down Option and steal a color and drop it in. And I can modify it this way as well. Find new colors. Expand my palette. And notice I'm not having to do anything with the magic wand anymore because I've already filled all those in. Whoops. And if I hold down Option, I can select a color, and then I can just modify it slightly. What, um, fill that in. When you're doing Option, you're, you're right-clicking on that, I guess? Or? Yeah, I'm, I'm using my left hand to hold down Option while I'm on a paint tool. Oh. It works with any paint tool. Oh. And it automatically changes it. I know it doesn't look like it changes it, but it changes it into what's called the eyedropper tool, which helps you steal a color. So it's just a really nice shortcut. All right, so you are not finished just once you have your, your flat color, though if you have the right flat colors, it can feel pretty finished, right? So I'm almost there. I'm working to find flat colors I'm just perfectly happy with, which can take a while. Let's see. especially when we're working with such high resolution files in PhotoP. Might go a little darker with that. Now, what if you want to color in something with flat color that's not fully enclosed? I know we have that issue. So what you do is you make a duplicate of your line art layer, Command J. Then you rasterize it. So you can right click on it and say rasterize. Remember, never rasterize all of your vector layers, right? But this is a duplicate. And then, for instance, if I wanted to make this stripe darker than this, there are big gaps in it. So I need to take my brush. I'm going to pick the color I want to change it into. So I want to use it this color. Hold down Option, steal that color. I'm going to paint that in. Oh, it's because I have an effect on. Let me turn that off so you can see what I'm doing. So I paint that in with that color, you see? And what I'm doing is containing that shape so that then I can use my paint bucket on my color layer and just